Hi everyone, my name is Eric Ratomero and I work in the research IT department at the Jackson Laboratory, which is a nonprofit research institute based in Bar Harbor, Maine. And today I'm going to give you a quick introduction to Napari, which is a image visualizer tool for Python. So it's a Python package that allows you to visualize images in multiple channels and so on and so forth. Uh, I'm going to show you a few of the functionalities. I want to just give you a very quick uh, overview of the things you can do there. It's not gonna be very advanced. It will assume you have some familiarity with Python and some familiarity with Conda. And if you don't understand Conda or you don't understand uh, Python in general, for Conda, we have a video on this channel as well talking a little bit about how to create environments. And for Python, there are plenty of tutorials all over the place. So uh, to start with, I am going to show you how to install Napari because since it's a Python package, it's slightly trickier than just downloading a zip file and uh, unzipping it. So I'm going to start by creating a new Conda environment. And for this, I am actually going to be using um, uh, Python 3.8, which is the newest version. So this will take a little while. Okay, so I have a new environment named NapariEnv, so I'm going to go ahead and activate it. And now I'm going to pip install Napari all. And the all here just says that you want the, the graphical backend that is the default one. Napari has multiple options for graphical backends. I'll just use the default one. Okay, that took a little while, but now if I just type Napari, that should give us a, a Napari window. There it is. Um, so before anything else, I'm just gonna show you how to open images in Napari, and I'm going to show you four different ways of doing that. So the first one is the simplest one. You just go to File, Open Files, and I'm just going to pick uh, a file I have here that is just some nuclei, and there you go. You have an image here and you have controls you would expect to have here, like contrast and color maps. So this is the quickest, easiest way to do it. Uh, so way of opening an image number two is instead of just saying Napari when you're opening it, you say Napari and you give the path to an image. So for example, something like this. And now when Napari opens, it opens with the image you specified there and you have all the same controls you had before. So way number three is from a Python script. So if you were using, for example, VS Code, which is normally what I use to do Python and you have a script like this. So here I'm using scikit-image, which is also the subject of a video we have on the channel. So if you don't know any scikit-image, feel free to go there and brush up on it. So I'm just uh, using data and RGB to gray. So I'm just getting the astronaut data, converting it to gray from RGB. And you need to wrap the Napari viewer into this, this QT loop here, but it's essentially a two line thing. And if I run this, what I get is uh, the RGB to gray converted image of the astronaut inside Napari. So in two lines in Python, you can get something that looks like a NumPy array and open it as an image. So the last way I'm going to show you is with a Jupyter notebook. So I have Jupyter lab running here and it's essentially a similar thing. So here actually I'm breaking up uh, instead of having one line where I say that the, the viewer is a view image, I am actually generating a viewer object and then adding an image to that. It doesn't really matter. You can do either of those. This gives you more flexibility to add extra images later if you want, for example. But here, if I just run this cell, I get the same thing. 
In this case, of course, I didn't convert it from RGB to gray, so I get the color image. And Napari is now clever enough to know that if it gets like a, a three, uh, three values per pixel image, it's probably a color image RGB. Um, you can see that here at the bottom left, you get uh, individual values for each individual pixel, which is great. And uh, I should say also before anything else that Napari is in active development. So I'm showing you here Napari 0.36, which is the current version. Uh, just sorry, 0.3.6, not 0.36. Um, so this is the current version. Here you have uh, a quick overview of the versions of everything I'm using now. This is the current Napari version. If you're watching this in the future, which by default, of course, you are, um, just be aware of the versions I'm using here. Okay, so I've shown you four different ways to open an image. So now I have an open image. What happens if I open another image on top of this? So here, for example, I'm going to open uh, a multi-channel image just for fun. So you see that now I have two different layers here. And the concept of layer here is something very similar to a layer in Photoshop or anything like that. So if I, at this point, I have multi-channel uh, on top of image in terms of the layer visibility. So if I turn that off, I will see the layer at the bottom. If I turn that on, I'll see the layer on top. And if I change the opacity here, for example, it starts being translucent and then I'm able to see the bottom layer. You can see that this is a multi-channel image. So you get a bar here at the bottom to see the different channels, kind of similar to Fiji. If you had multiple dimensions, you will get multiple bars here. So it's a pretty straightforward uh, viewing experience. Um, so now I'll talk a little bit about layers. I've, I've mentioned that if you open multiple images, you get multiple layers here. Uh, there are other kinds of layers in uh, Napari. You can see here, for example, if I click this button, I will get a new points layer. This button will give me a new shapes layer, for example. So these are other kinds of, of, of layers you can get in Napari. So I will start um, by playing around with a points layer. So three channels and the things you expect to work like zooming in and out just work like with a, with a mouse wheel or, or the ways you would expect zooming to work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that um, terminal here and you see that it gives me like a, essentially an IPython terminal. So I'll start by just importing NumPy. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a NumPy array with the coordinates for the points I had to add, I want to add in this image here. Uh, let me just paste this. So now I have a NumPy array and now I can do a viewer dot add points, uh, points size equals 30, for example. So that's just gonna tell what size I want the points to be in. And you see that you get three points here at the size you specified. And that's it, that's as easy, that's, that's everything you need to add points. And you see you get a new layer here, which is a points layer. And if I make it invisible, for example, the points disappear. If I make it visible, they appear again. So the power of Napari is that you still have uh, full access to everything uh, in as Python objects. So for example, if I do viewer.layers points, dot data, that will give me all the data for the points layer. So in this case, it's a two by three array uh, with the two coordinates for each of the three points I added. Um, very quickly, I'm just going to show you here, for example, this is uh, technically a 3D image because I have three different channels. Um, so if I click on this button here, uh, it will change from showing 2D to showing 3D. And you see that the bar at the bottom disappears and you can now rotate this thing in 3D. And you see that the points kind of like go through all, all layers in this image. Uh, they exist in all planes on the original image. So I'll just go back to 2D. Okay, so I'm going to remove the points layer here just for clarity. So you can just press the delete button here. 
and it's gone. So now I'm going to add a shape layer. So shapes are just like polygons. Um, so I'll just create uh, three arrays with the coordinates to three different uh, polygons I want to use here. Uh, so I have a triangle which has three points, of course. I have a person shaped polygon that has a lot of points. And I have a building shaped polygon that also has a lot of points. Uh, so now I have these three arrays. I'm going to create an array with uh, those arrays. So I'm just going to say the polygons is triangle, person, building. And now I'm going to add those as shapes to the viewer. So I'm going to create uh, a new layer with shapes. So I'm adding a shape with the polygons. I'm saying that they are polygons. I'm asking the edge width to be five and the edge color to be coral and the fill color in the polygons to be royal blue. And there they are. So this is the triangle. This is kind of like a person shaped uh, polygon. And this is kind of like a factory like building that I added there. So again, I can do viewer.layers and the name of this layer is polygons dot data. And that gives me all the three arrays for the three polygons. So for example, if I just want the triangle, I could do the same, but zero. That just gives me the three triangle points. And of course, if I just want the first point in that triangle, I could do zero, zero. That's not true. You cannot do that. You can do this instead, probably. Yeah. So you can individually pick each individual coordinate for each individual object you have, which is a very powerful thing to have. You have full access in Python to all the objects you create here. And you can see here in shapes, you can create a lot of different stuff. You can create rounded objects as well. You can add, yeah, there's a lot of stuff and paths and lines and everything else. Finally, if you want to have access to all the layers in your image, for example, then of course you can just do viewer.layers and that gives you a list with all the individual layers you have. In this case, we only have two layers, but for example, if I add a points layer here, then if I do the same thing, it will give me the points layer as well. So as I said, this is a very, very quick introduction to the basic stuff you can do in Apari. Uh, there's a whole plugin interface and people have been writing plugins to do stuff in Apari. You have control over the interface itself. So you can add extra buttons, for example. So maybe in a future video, I'm going to show you what you can do, for example, uh, in terms of interfacing Apari with Omero, you can have access to thumbnails and everything else. So it's a really powerful tool that's still kind of in its, its starting stages. But I think it's really promising and I think it's going to become more and more the de facto standard for image viewing in Python, which is a, a huge field. So if you are interested in more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the Jackson Laboratory channel on YouTube. We have been putting a bunch of those up. Other than that, thank you for your attention and thanks for watching.